Welcome to the Car Deal Advisor Podcast Show. The presenter of this show is Hugh Hedrick. Get ready for special motoring legends and great deals on your next set of wheels. So the five red lights have just gone out and it's go, go, go. Welcome to the Cardio Advisor Podcast Show with me, Hugh Hattrick, and my very special guest, Jonathan Sutherland. Hello, Hugh. How are you doing this lovely Monday? Yeah, oh, fantastic. It's a lovely, fresh day here in Duns and the Borders. <laughs> but, uh... That's one way of describing the wind chill factor, right? Minus two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's quite a thing. But yes, no, we're all very upbeat and, and ready to go for our next great podcast. What have you been doing the last few days then, John? You know, you've been traveling to London. In London town. Yes, I haven't been down there for a while, so it was interesting to get back to the the city and experience the chaos of the traffic and see the uh, people driving around the place at an average of two miles an hour. We set off from (laughs) West London uh, um, yesterday to go and get some uh, breakfast in Barnes. Well, it almost turned into supper because it was such a long journey to get there. We... We set off into an, a traffic jam immediately. I don't know what was going on, probably a stabbing or something. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be what happens down there. And we must have sat for 45 minutes and gone Brilliant. less than a mile, I would say. Oh, so, um, But the good thing was that in traffic just ahead of us was a Ferrari 812 Superfast, which was going precisely no faster than we were. So, <laughs> 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 um, Given that we were in a uh, BMW i3 electric car, we were using an awful lot less fuel as well. So we were saving the planet while going for brunch. <laughs> I was going to say, does it, was he giving it a bit of a rev, the person driving it? Was it, uh, was no. it, was it super fast? <laughs> no. Oh. no. Just <laughs> trucking traffic, fed up. Yeah, because they'd done yeah. road work at the same time. And they've got two of the major routes into West London were closed at the same time with road works, which just sounds like oh, no. every, every council in the world. It's not just Edinburgh that comes up with, insane plans like that but, uh, <laughs> but it was um but it was good yeah we eventually got into town we just abandoned the car in chelsea and then took took the bus <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> yeah, or the tube the tube rather we did the tube that was right otherwise yeah. we're gonna so, miss the train so normally you see some pretty nice cars down there um i know you're saying you saw some lamborghinis and some obviously there's ferrari 812 i mean that's one of the latest ones out, so that would have been quite quite fun to see. That, that's right. It was a white one, actually. It didn't look so good in white. I think you probably need a slightly darker color to, to show that car off to its best effect. But it was a, uh, still a mighty nice car to sit in the traffic in, that's for sure. Other machines, yeah. well, there was a um, couple of Lamborghini Uruses, um, mm-hmm. which I thought which was excellent. They were going around Sloan Square, and one had a bit of a race with a Maserati, and uh, they were just tearing oh, wow. it up, just ripping it up. <laughs> and the, the, the Lamborghini was a, kind of middle-aged Italian woman, and she was just racing around in this Lambo. Um, on a, it was on Italian plates, and it was just it was just ripping it up. It was uh, something else. <laughs> that would be a good headline for the show. I'll definitely put Italian woman racing Lamborghinis. That's bound to get some interest. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. They were in a hurry to get to, to brunch, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think you were saying that you've been looking at some of the reports from Geneva as well, the Geneva Motor Show. Because that was the big one that's over that's on this week. That's right. Well, the big news is that coming back to the UK now is the Toyota Camry. I mean, I it, I don't know what we've done, you know, for the last fourteen years since it's been gone, but finally it's back. Toyota have got their their model bland model at the <laughs> at the top of their lineup. It's an all hybrid this time. They're giving up completely with um, diesel and petrol, I think. Well, it's a petrol hybrid, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's totally hybrid. That'll be coming in shortly and to be sold to precisely nobody. <laughs> um, Hi, the new Golf has been launched now, fully undisguised. And that looks a little oh, bit, I don't know, it looks a little bit peculiar. I've got the current Golf, as you know, and, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a sort of stylish design, I suppose. Neat. It's nothing particularly special, but the new one just looks a bit sort of, Blobby, I don't know. It just doesn't quite have that kind of neat, chic look to it that the uh, that the old one did. But maybe it'll look better in the flesh. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, isn't it? I mean, mind you, mind you I mean, the, the Golf is always good, but it's funny when you go back to that Camry. I mean, the Camry was a pretty dull car in the old days, 
but the new one it's going to have to be something a bit more special you think to kind of <laughs> raise to awareness it, to know? cut it in today's market absolutely yeah um you know, i don't know what people, vox have come come up with but we'll we'll find out when they launch it but the early pitches it doesn't look too bad um yeah. but i don't know i just i just what 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 is it that makes you go hmm Camry, <laughs> you, know, you know, it hasn't yeah. got hasn't got the brand. You know, it hasn't. Oh, I don't know. I just don't know what makes you get out there and buy that car. To be honest, well, I mean, it won't be cheap. I mean, if it's a, if it's based as a kind of premium kind of executive car or that kind of to replace the Avensis, it's surely going to start off at about twenty five grand at least. I would well, have thought it's got to, um, hasn't it? Because Toyotas are not cheap cars anymore. Um, no, at no. all, they're almost positioned as a. Uh, a, a it's not a premium. luxury brand, but yeah, it's almost a premium yeah. brand, isn't it? Because uh, yeah, you've got yeah. Kia and Hyundai, which are now kind of mainstream. I wouldn't call them premium, but they're no longer a budget right. brand. So Toyota obviously yeah. positions itself a little bit higher as a luxury brand. Yeah, the entry-level yeah. model, Hugh, guess what it starts at? Guess what they're wanting for this thing? 29000 You are the car deal advisor because you've got that pretty Was much. Was it right? Well, Twenty nine 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 five. That's the entry level <laughs> design model, which comes with wheels, an interior, <laughs> air conditioning, and an ignition. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. If you want to really treat yourself, then spend another thirteen hundred pounds for some LED fog lights, blind spot monitoring, and a wireless smartphone charging pack. So uh, there you go. Oh, it really. Oh, dear, 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 dear. That just sends me to sleep just when you tell me that. You know, oh, <laughs> like... the pictures here, it really, you know what? It looks just like the Camry did in 1992. It hasn't really changed. It's just a big Goodness blobby, me. blobby saloon. I don't know who's going to buy this because literally everyone else in the market is going to SUVs apart from Toyota, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite virtually designing and uh, introducing SUVs with the Land Cruiser back in the 60s have now decided not to bother. Yeah, that is, that is, yeah, that's going to be a very, very limited market, and that for sure, especially that kind of money. That's a huge amount of money. It is, and that, and it's just, you know, it's. I mean, nowadays you can get really great cars from lots of different makes, you know, like Peugeot and Citroen. Um, you know, you can get nice SUVs or something that looks a bit different. You've got Alfa Romeo. Um, you know, you've got everybody making something. Um, you know, and for that kind of money, you're going to get a far better deal, getting even like a Skoda Kodiak. You know, which is going to hold its money well. I mean, I, I can't see a Camry holding its value um, that well at all. Well, that's the Who's thing. Gonna... Well, they come down to a point, and then they they don't seem to depreciate very much. I guess the mini cab is quite like them because they're quite reliable. But who buys yeah. new? I don't know. I was just looking at the the Avensis, which is the uh, really dreary car that preceded it. <laughs> they only sold three and a half thousand of those in twenty thirteen. Yeah, yeah. It's last year, full year in production. And you think about what BMW are selling with the 5 Series, it's probably 10 times that, if not right. more than that. Yeah. So as we always say on this podcast, prestige is dead. Prestige is now <laughs> mainstream. So if you want something that stands out, buy a Camry. Does that yeah, make or, is it, or an MG ZS. <laughs> oh, well, I saw one of those in London, because MG have opened up a premium sort of flagship showroom on Piccadilly. And the showroom is probably... Uh -huh worth more than the company <laughs> 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 but in the uk anyway but yeah they've got the, the cars in there and they're really selling the the britishness of it all so they've got a, a mini in, in in the front obviously built at uh at the old uh rover factory and they've got a, a union jack on the roof and they've got an mg3 the zs and whatever the other one's called um gs is it and uh they've all got union nice. jack so i went in there and i made myself pretty popular by saying Oh, hi, they're, they're all made in China, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy said, yeah, even the mugs. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's a slightly cynical marketing exercise, but putting it on Piccadilly. Um, but yeah, maybe it'll get, as, I suppose it gets publicity because you get a massive walk past. Um, you know, or so many people we walk by in that every day. And that's um, exactly what they were doing, Hugh. They were walking straight past. <laughs> <laughs> to go down to Park Lane BMW and buy themselves a the Beamer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been there once. That was quite an impressive garage, actually. Yeah. And there was Park Lane Lexus as well at one point. I used to remember that's where we got a Lexus once um, from there. But, um, but yeah, no, it's a lovely part of London, though, to walk around and to see all the, all the kind of nice sights and things. 
But it makes me wonder. I, I know that they sold the Mini name, didn't they? BMW bought the Mini name. But you kind of wonder if, if, if they had an old Mini in, the, in that showroom for MG. Yeah. Could they make an MG Mini? That would be the next thing. And, you know, nobody messes with the Chinese <laughs> when it comes to copyright. <laughs> yeah, they, they certainly could do that. <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, they're quite cheap. I mean, we're looking. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were about fifteen nine nine five. That's where you get any discounts for the the MG ZS ZS. I think it is they had in the showroom. I mean, but, I mean oh yeah, the, yeah. the plastics. You know, I don't think anyone coming out of Fortnum and Mason was going to be popping their bags in the back of an MG ZS. <laughs> 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 Not the most high quality uh, interiors, um, but uh, yeah, it was interesting to see that they had a a, a presence there. And of course, they bring out their electric car mm. later in the year, the MG E ZS. With a two hundred mile range, oh, where, um, they'll probably be really. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know about that. That that could be quite could be quite good because if it's priced well, that could be quite a, a reasonable car. Actually, that could be quite a decent electric car. That's right. Well, I mean, the Chinese are really pushing electric cars, so they uh, they are um, trying to get. Was it a, is it a six of their market electric? Which their market is a huge market, so that's a uh, uh, a big number of electric cars going to have on the market. Over there, so oh, yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. interesting to see what they come up with, and well, maybe you can get an extended test driving on here. See how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you want an extended test drive in a car you'd actually want to drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we make it a bit shorter, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, you must keep it for two days. No, <laughs> give me my days here back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ah, it's, it's, it's something else, isn't it? But, uh, oh, well, it's certainly interesting. That if it's going to be in a ZS, obviously it's a car that people already know. Um, so that's quite good. I mean, everyone's trying to bring out these electric cars. Skoda, Seat, they've all got cars coming out. Um, and the latest versions are going to have uh, EV versions, um, which is all quite good. And I was just speaking to a chap called Donald Brandt in uh, my last episode, my last podcast. Yeah. Um, and he takes like cult cars, you know, like um, early model Volkswagen Golfs. And like, you know, they, they, they call them in America, like the rabbit version, you know, the kind of the convertible. Yes. Um, and he puts up, he puts a battery pack in them, um, which is a great idea because a lot of the time, you know, these cars can't be used anymore or they're maybe on the scrap and then you, you can buy them quite cheaply and then put in this pack and then sell it. Um, so that's certainly his plan. And I think that could be quite, quite good because, you know, you take a, a lovely classic car and then you make it kind of with, put an electric, electric power pack in it. And then I suppose it's zero emission. So it's going to be cheap to run. Um, and quite different to anything else that's on the road. I haven't had a chance to listen to the podcast yet. So is that a business that he's setting up, is it? Yeah, yeah, he's based in Denmark. Um, and that's what he's doing, like, like cult cars, um, but this time with an electric wow. engine. Um, that, he, he, yeah, he calls it crush or convert. Um, so basically either you crush it or you convert well, it. Well, that's a good idea because um, we spoke on the that's... podcast before about how we quite like old car designs now because they're just a bit more, I don't know, a bit more personality Aye. to them compared to modern cars, which are all a bit samey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I because he, he was asking me, you know, what car would I want to put an electric power pack in, and I, it was a hard one because I thought, mm, I don't know. I it kind of eventually came up with a Jaguar XK140, um, but I, I love that car anyway. I think that's the most one of the most beautiful cars um, out there, like in a two door um, sports convertible um, from the early fifties, but very, very rare. Um, but because uh, anything else that's got a decent engine, you've got to have that engine. You've just got well, to have it. You can't, you can't yeah, even electric. This is the only thing you you don't want anything too iconic. Maybe like a a nine eleven because Singer make those amazing nine elevens, don't they? They they convert old old shells over and they sell them for a huge amount of money. And there's another company that builds uh, E types up, don't they? Uh, Clarkson always goes on about them on um, when you see you Top Gear. Oh yes, the yeah, Eagle, yeah, and yeah, Eagle, yeah, Eagle, the company, and they're absolutely incredible. Because what you want from those is the sound of the engine, the roar, and the vibration and the induction uh, noise. And if you're going to just put a, a Dyson unit in it, then it's not going to have quite the same appeal, really. But I do think things uh, like a, almost the perfect car is something like a VW Rabbit, you know, a, a convertible, even a, a Beetle, something like that. Which it's not. It was never. It was uh, never about the the noise. It was never about the the sort of uh, drama of the, of the the powertrain. It was more about the kind of cult um, looks of the car and what uh, it meant, you know, maybe on the west coast of California. Um, that's right so i, I think that's a proper choice it's a good question though yeah yeah i mean also he was doing things like you know the old um the volkswagen caravel or the what they call it that the van yeah you know, the kind of the, the, type, 
the one that had the, the, the kind of an empty type, type two. Um, what would they call it? Type two, yeah. And because there's quite a few of them around. I mean, I, I love watching that program, Barn Finders, on YouTube, um, because they, they find all sorts of cars like that and they try and start them up and do them up and all the rest of it. Um, but there's still quite a few sitting around in scrapyards all over America and all over Europe, especially. Um, so that you can have rich pickings and really all you do is take the engine out and then put the battery pack in. Um, the, the, similarly, they get it from Bosk, uh, the company called Bosk, and, and they do they, they can line everything up with the, the drive shafts and all that kind of stuff. So it's quite straightforward um, to simply just slip it in. And then there you have it. You've got an electric car. Well, it's a good idea if but, somebody uh, can produce a, a power pack, which can easily be slotted in most engine bays. That's a great idea. You've got to wonder how, yeah. the, how maybe the, the balance of the car, because obviously when you design a car, you put the fuel tank at the back, you put the engine at the front, the gearbox, wherever, to make it nice and balanced. You wonder what how stable no. a VW T2 would be with a, a massive <laughs> lithium battery hanging out the rear end. <laughs> you, you might need to, the sort of crash test might not, uh, might not look too pretty. No, no, I think it'll be kind of here and there. But uh, <laughs> yeah. even they'll say, I don't, re- I don't remember it being this bad behind the wheel. You know, but it could be. You, get it. you put the powertrain from a McLaren P1 in it or something. <laughs> <laughs> or a Tesla Model X just yeah. with zero modifications. <laughs> zero to 16. You've been lighting up those Exactly, zero to 16 in two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was the other thing. They were saying that um, Tesla's brought out this new coupe, and it does zero to 60. And is it one and a half seconds or two? Or it might be two and a half seconds. Um, but it, look, it looks incredible. It looks a bit like the Mercedes AMG, um, you know, the, the, the big one, um, the big coupe. But um, it's quite a quite a machine. So they're all up in yeah. the power. I mean, this thing's four-wheel drive, so it can get the grip down. Um, but uh, I was joking with Donald that it's the kind of car, if you ever meet Lewis Hamilton at the lights, you might actually have a chance of, Beating him <laughs> off them. Um, if you've got a Tesla, you know, with, with one you of put those. it in ludicrous mode and just yeah. press go. Absolutely. Aye, but does that not take your, but, uh, no, it's amazing there's no gear changes anymore. So all the skill has gone out of travel light shootouts, hasn't it? Because you really do just put the car in launch Aye. control or you put it in ludicrous mode and then the, the cars just, just go. You know, there's no, there's no drama. There's no Aye. wheel spin. I mean, half the, the fun of it is just disappearing in a cloud of smoke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's after the fun of doing a burnout at the light. So get, getting the clutch point just right, you know, and just getting that perfect lag where you, you don't get the turbo boost, you slip the clutch enough, you slip the wheel. Right. Well, definitely. You're never going to pull a bird if you just put it into launch control and just put your electric car in full Dyson mode and then just press go. <laughs> she wants to see you burn up the rear. <laughs> yeah, you kind of do that in a Nissan Leaf, certainly. But, you know, it's not quite the same yeah, thing exactly. as a Ford Mustang or something. And you, you know? just get arrested by the uh, <laughs> eco-police, probably. Yeah, so you're using too much electric. Exactly. But, um, but I know it's... I was quite funny because I was watching an old video of John and Lacey um, in his Formula One days and the kind of Gerhard Berger. And honestly, they never... They, they always jumped to sort of every <laughs> start because there was some... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a great video um, that people have put up on YouTube um, of them actually doing their, their warm-up lap and it's really quite tough, you know, they're trying to get the heat into the tyres and everything else and when they literally they come to the grid and it seems like a much shorter period of time and of course in those days they only had the red lights and then it went straight yes. on to green um, so it was it was so quick but literally when they, you kind of you, you can feel it getting closer and closer as they're moving their hands on the wheel you know, and they select the gear and that and then literally when the red light comes on, they just go. <laughs> it's like, it's like, exactly. Kind of, I mean, they, back, in, back in those <laughs> days, cause, uh, and then they brought it in, didn't they? Would it be late 90s? They brought in the sensors so they could tell if the car had moved. Aye, aye. I think there was one race. I don't know which yeah, Grand Prix yeah. it was. But they said, and the only person that didn't jump the start today was Mark Blundell. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> he was he's too busy asleep, you know, looking at his bank balance, or trying to save his tyres or something. Um, but... Yeah, he was the only one that didn't jump the start. Was the, everyone else jumped the start? So they just decided just to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's incredible because you, you could kind of feel that as soon as they got into gear and the red light went on, they were kind of moving forward quite slowly. But you know they were definitely yeah. moving forward. Um, and then and, and some of them timed it so that they were literally coming up to the grid as the almost like as the red lights came on. You know, um, it was quite quite a thing. But um, but then off they went. Uh, but they were amazing races to watch because they were like fully at it. And of course, you've got these big V12 Ferrari engines, you know, screaming away, um, and with semi-automatic boxes, but they just sounded fantastic. 
Um, and also the, the McLaren Hondas sounded incredible with their V12 yeah. engines and things like that. Um, but of course, uh, but that brings us on to Formula One because it's the start of the yes, season of this course. week on Friday, uh, first practice. Aye, yeah. aye. And now it's exclusively on Sky, uh, on Sky TV. You can't get it on terrestrial television anymore. Um, it was certainly not for live events. Um, it's uh, only for, the only way you can get it live is on Sky F1. So no one will know what happens this season unless they, we tell them on the card. In all fairness, I'm doing a show on Sunday morning, early Sunday morning with uh, Andrew Dixon. Oh, We're really? going to uh, watch the race and then record it um, and do hopefully be one of the first podcasts up um, ready to go um, with, a, with a, a Grand Prix update and the Grand Prix review, which will be um, for Australia. That's which a I'm great really idea. So you're going to gonna go out to fun. Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Via the, and we can hopefully beat the BBC. And that will be, it will be quicker than them to do the podcast. And we'll do it straight out. We'll just record it straight away. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll put it out early Sunday morning or by, you know, by, by kind of 10 a.m. Sunday morning, it'll be out. So that should oh, be good. That should be a good race. And I, I'm intrigued to see actually how fast Mercedes are because I don't think they've revealed their full hand. I, I really don't. I think they've, they've yeah, been keeping, um, uh, pulling back. Do they call it sandbagging? Is that what they call it? Because the, yeah. um, uh, there's definitely something going on there. There's no way that they're, they're as slow as they have been in some of the tests. I think Lewis Hamilton at the end, the last day of testing, he was he was within a tenth of a second right. of Vettel, so it, it certainly wasn't much in there on the same tyres. I think so. It was it was pretty close. Um, but no, I, I think it's going to be good. I have a I, you know it's every year I get a kind of vision of who I think is going to win. And last year I had a, a vision of Hamilton going off like on train tracks, and it was true because by the end of the season he'd won it pretty convincingly. But on this one, the vision that I had was that there was Vettel um, overtaking lots of people, mm-hmm. starting at the back, overtaking lots of people, but then having a crash um, as he got towards the front. So I just wonder, is he going to have one of those years, whether it will be, uh, you know, um, it might, he might have a few dodgy qualifying sessions, make his way through the field, and then end up crashing out and coming together with Verstappen again and people like that. So it could be interesting, but I think it will be a very close season, and a lot, a lot is on his I shoulders. I think so. I think the, the pressure's on Vettel because last year he really he lost the plot, didn't he? He just seemed to be rather rattled. He didn't concentrate. Yeah. He was spinning just virtually every race. He was spinning around uh, the place. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, the last few races were yeah. great. But no, no, not, not, not at all. I'm watching about the the new rule for. Thank good because it means that everyone keeps going. Everyone, you know, and you might not be in the top three. But you might yeah. still get the fastest lap, so it, it's quite a good way to, to get that extra point, um, which should be for, which should be really good. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think they're all a bit closer. I mean, the the the, the you know the Alfa Romeos look quite good. Um, um, Leclerc and obviously um, right uh, and uh, Vettel look very good. Um, but yeah, no, I think that it's 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 closed right up. McLaren um, are right back in it seemingly. they they've done a lot better. Um, so that's good for them. And even Williams have I think pulled up a little bit from where they were, but they've got Kubica. Um, and George Russell. So that's going to be a really interesting it, it, pairing. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, it, it will be. But I, I see Paddy Lowe is leaving Williams. That's a bad time for your chief engineer, chief technical officer to leave, isn't it? I wonder why he's leaving. It's a bit yeah. of a weird one. I, I don't even know why he's going, to be honest. But it's a bit odd to... He's no, not been there because... that. Sorry, is that... Is no, that I don't know long? when he was there, but it, it, yeah, he hasn't been there that long. And to leave before the first race, it's he hasn't really given a reason, apparently. Um, yeah, he moved, he moved there in, what was it, 20? Uh, yeah, it could only have been he was, that. Yeah, yeah. Mercedes, yeah, yeah he was that's Mercedes right. Yeah, before. Yeah. But, uh-huh. um, yeah, so I don't know what's going on there. Because he, he worked very closely with Hamilton, didn't he? Was he with Hamilton and his, his McLaren years or something? And he went with yes. Hamilton to Mercedes. So, uh, obviously, all is not well. But I don't uh-huh. know where he's going. So, uh, whether it's something, some uh-huh. kind of personal uh-huh. reason or something, I don't quite know. But uh, he's off, so I'm not sure Williams are not going to be <laughs> any better place without him there, I wouldn't have thought. But it's going to get more interesting. I, I think yeah. they need to, I mean, it'd be quite a good thing for your listeners to email in what would make it more interesting points wise. I think fastest laps good because it encourages people to at least get a point, you know, so it, it, you, you could be one of the, right. <laughs> you could be one of the bat marker teams. And I think as soon as you get a point, right, you get some extra points for, um, uh, for the team. That, that yeah, that's money. For the money. Yeah, what that's you could true. do is you have yeah. one of your cars sort of set up sensibly, and the other car you could just have the engines. So it like just explodes on lap three or something. But you know, you, you put about five <laughs> liters of fuel in it. You tune the engine to one hundred and twenty percent, and you send out your kind of slightly disposable driver, <laughs> <laughs> and you just say, "Get 
Get us a point, kid. <laughs> Go, Pedro. <laughs> We've got your life yeah. insurance stand up. Go for it. So you find out that someone, you know, one of the real bat market teams gets the fastest lap. I mean, the driver's killed immediately, obviously, but, you know, in, in doing so, you know, it, it makes the team a few, a few million quid. So it could be quite interesting. Or you could get points for the most dangerous overtaking maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite good. I think your friend Kevin Magnuson or Grosjean would be certainly qualifying for that so. for that yeah. one. Usually, they tend to, you know. <laughs> but uh, but I think they've got to, they've got to finish in the top ten to get that ah. point. Yeah, so they're going to do fastest oh, lap and then finish that. in the top ten. Otherwise, you really could have one of, the, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the slowest teams. You get the other cars <laughs> just driving like crazy with two laps before they explode. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so they've, they've got to finish the race, have they? Or just get in? I, I think, yeah. They've got to finish in 10th, minimum 10th. Oh, we should make place. the rules here. It could be way more. Good one. For yeah. the most dangerous overtaking, brilliant. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'd be quite good there, because you get so close to the car in front when you pass, because you like to slipstream it. You, you pull out the slipstream with <laughs> literally inches left. <laughs> could win that one. Yeah, my, da- my dad's overtakes are quite impressive sometimes. Well, you've got to slipstream quite a bit to get the speed up, you know, so you can actually overtake. But, um, but uh, although it's, it's all right if you're, if you're overtaking a mocha, it's usually quite easy. Um, anything else, and it, and it, it, well, it uh, requires a bit yeah. more skill. I but, got uh, car today, and my '59 brake horsepower Volkswagen up. I overtook a Mini Cooper S, and the driver was just livid, but he just he just wasn't paying attention. And there's a couple of corners near us, near uh, Rennington. And you, if you get a nice flow going, you can really build some speed up. And I just started accelerating about three corners, yeah, corners yeah. earlier. And I just, I, sail, I sailed past him. And it was too <laughs> late. And he was right on my tail for about the next <laughs> three miles. But I, you just couldn't believe it was overtaken by a 59 brake horsepower up. And I thought, well, <laughs> caught, caught you snoozing, mate. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite funny, though, if you drive a really kind of basic car, I remember doing that in my Hyundai i10, and it was like the one liter yeah. i10. But they were really good around the corners, and they were phenomenal brakes as well. You could really the brakes were incredible on them, um, and uh, and you could overtake people quite easily and often upset them um, because they were if they weren't paying attention or the, you know they were just you know slow out of a corner, and you could actually hold quite a bit of speed, um, and they were great fun. In fact, you drove um, our i10 a couple of years ago when we had it um, on that epic run yes. down to Millbrook. And back. They, so, they, um, they're good so, yeah. machines, and the the up. It's quite a nice little chassis on it. I mean, it's no power whatsoever, but as long as it's dry with those tiny little skinny wheels at the mm. front, you can get a bit of grip. As soon as it gets a bit wet, actually full wet, it's not so bad. It's when it's a bit greasy and damp, and they've had salt on the road. It's kind of half dried and uh. half hasn't. And that's when you've really got to really got to watch it. You're quite easy to have some yeah. pretty dramatic understeer. <laughs> <laughs> which can slow you down and uh, leave you on the wrong side of the road every now and again. But it was, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty pretty well hooked up today. That's for sure. Guy was livid. You don't need horsepower, no. ladies and gentlemen. You just need to put your concentrate on your lines, keep your momentum up, and uh, you can get past a Mini Cooper S with a third the brake horsepower, less than that. <laughs> <laughs> I once overtook a, a BMW M5 in my i10 coming into coming near Chernside, but uh, uh, and I was amazed. But he was just he was just dawdling along about fifty mile an hour, um, and on one of the the, the streets, I was able to get past him, um, and that was not bad. But he he was not happy at all about that. Yeah, um, he was but there's really nothing upset. to do. I mean, if you've accelerated earlier <laughs> and you've got the momentum, then I mean, you virtually need a you know a Ferrari yeah. Superfast to do anything about it because if you're You've got sort of 20, 30 miles an hour <laughs> speed advantage coming out of a corner and they're in the wrong gear or just not paying attention to you right. alongside. There's nothing anyone can do. I mean, they can get right up on your tail almost immediately. But aye, aye. Yeah, no, it's it's quite a thing. I think we're going to have to start doing our, our old short stories, John, our old car stories. I think they're definitely worth, uh, they worth putting on our podcasts and maybe perhaps our, our uh, quad bike adventures as well. Of when we jumped over the yes. family who were having the picnic. Yeah, we should. I think that would be together. quite a good one. Or the time when you, the only time you managed to avoid a head-on collision was by driving under a fuel tanker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some classics. They're going to get published soon. Yeah, published that was soon. good. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been fantastic having you on the show tonight, John. 
I know you're busy and you've got to, to head out, so it's been fantastic doing a half an hour show. Um, have you got anything to say for our visitors for the week ahead in motoring? Perhaps about Formula One. Well, or just it's going to be quite tips. bad weather tomorrow, I believe. So um, some driving tips is make sure that you've got your, your tyre pressure set right. You've got a bit of tread on your tyres. Uh, don't aquaplane on storm, whatever it's called, tomorrow. Uh, keep the speed up in the in the corners. Don't get in the wrong gear. Um, yeah, just, just, just concentrate when you drive. Just concentrate. Keep the speed up. And, yeah. You know, you don't need the power. Yeah, like you just a- need to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember there was a great interview with Michael Schumacher in one of the earlier years in the nineties, uh, late nineties, uh, when he was driving for Ferrari, and, he, and they asked him what's his, you know, what's his aim for the year, uh, and he says, exactly. "Drive fast, that's don't it. crush." That's, <laughs> that's, it. That, that's so, it. That, that's much better. Four words. Right. That's pretty, pretty much what I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. Drive fast, don't keep, crash. Keep driving, keep the revs up, <laughs> and remember that you can go above three thousand RPM on a petrol car. You are allowed to. <laughs> and if you're driving up you've, you've... yeah I was going to say you have to absolutely have to well that's brilliant well what I'll do I'll bring the I'll bring the the, 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 the uh, a close to the show uh, yeah we'll close the show but thank you to all our listeners remember you can visit our website which is www.cardealadvisor.co.uk where you can get fantastic discounts on all sorts of new cars and new vans. Uh, plus, we have amazing services like car rental available at, at over 53,000 locations and great deals on that. And if you like supercars, which we tend to do, you can drive a supercar for just £49. It could be a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. There's lots of packages available to suit your needs. So make sure that you hit the website and check out our deals. And um, Also, you can check out our YouTube channel, which is under Hugh Hattrick. Um, and you'll see lots of videos that are on there. And we're doing a Ford Focus test on Thursday. So there'll be a new video coming out later on in the week. But it's been fantastic to speak to you this week. And uh, well, take care, John. I'll speak to you after the show. But to all our listeners, have a wonderful week. And drive fast, don't crash. Bye just now. At cardioadvisor.co.uk, we can help you save thousands of pounds on your next new car or van. And we can also source second-hand cars as well. And we can save you money on car rental, whether it be in the UK and abroad. Just click our rental link on the website. And we'll give you a free gift if you trade in your car with Way By Any Car using our special website link. So go to the website now and see how much you can save. And it's back to the show. Thanks for listening. For more information, go to cardioadvisor.co.uk and you can see all the special offers that we have on the website. And remember, we have our YouTube channel, which is at Hugh Hattrick, and also we have our podcast on Podbean, on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Anchor FM. And if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to our shows, or you can donate every month for just a pound. Thanks for listening, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.